This is a uh, billboard. <sighs> Whatever. Turn up. Welcome to Chart Center. It's Tetris. And I'm Christina. Tetris, I think we need to live on set 24-7. I'm down with that. It's bigger than my apartment. Well, because every time we leave, our correspondent Shira comes in and things get really strange. Unbreak my heart. Say you love me again. We are taking Hollywood by storm. We I know. are a hip hop this is, power this is couple. Real Hollywood right here. Donnie Billboard himself is rolling over in his grave. Donnie Billboard. Only I we had Donnie built Billboard. This company with my bare hands. Donnie Billboard. That was Eric Andre from Adult Swim, and he stopped by, and things got very weird very quickly. There's bugs. <laughs> We'll show you more later, but first, let's dig into this week's charts with Inside the Numbers, presented by StubHub. I can't wait to show you my toys. Suicide Squad's soundtrack is a winner this week on the Billboard 200, debuting at number one. That makes it the first chart-topping soundtrack in a year <sighs> since Disney Channel's Descendants kicked off at number one last August. They're bad guys. How can you say that? I'm just unique. And the last number one theatrical film soundtrack was Pitch Perfect 2, which debuted at the top in May 2015. When I eat crowds like you for lunch. And since there's nothing the internet loves more than a good DC versus Marvel showdown. Dance off, bro. Me and you. That's a good idea, honey. Let's go way, way back to 2014, when the soundtrack to Marvel and Disney's Guardians of the Galaxy blasted off at number three. Harley Quinn and company smacked down that debut. We're bad guys. It's what we do. But Guardians rose to number one and held the spot for two weeks. Of course, that soundtrack was made up entirely of previously released songs, many of which had been major Hot 100 hits. The Suicide Squad set is an ambitious mix of the new and the old. It includes rap, electronic music, and classic rock covers. We ask you to pick your favorite song from the All-Star soundtrack, and surprise, it's 21 Pilots, Heathens. The track's been climbing the Hot 100, where it rockets from number 11 to number four this week. Mm, and another squad we have to talk about is DJ Snake and Justin Bieber. They made their Hot 100 debut with Let Me Love You, and that comes in at number 12 on the chart, right as Bieber, Bieber made his Instagram private, right? No, well, no, right as Bieber's cold Old Water Club with Major Lazer powers back to number two. Let Me Love You is also the best selling song of the week. Now, as we told you last week, Justin's world tour continues in Europe with the Knox just announced as the opener. We've already pitted DC versus Marvel, so why don't we switch things Get up? Political. Maybe we should, Republican versus Democrat. This week, we ask you who should perform at the inauguration for either Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump. For Clinton, DNC performer Katy Perry barely edged out Lady Gaga with Demi Lovato coming in third. Now, Trump's prospective celebration looks a little different, with Azalea Banks coming out on top over Kid Rock and Loretta Lynn. Well, we're talking about who should perform at inauguration, mm -hmm. but I think their campaign trail soundtrack could use a little shaking yeah, up. Yeah, and I think to help them out, they should really call Eric Andre. You know what? You might be mm -hmm. right. Eric Andre, who just kicked off season four of the Eric Andre show on Adult Swim. Hey, everyone. Welcome to season four. Eric and our correspondent, Shira Carson, spent some quality time together talking conventions, music, making guests uncomfortable, and more. Overall, things got weird really fast. Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Shira Carson, sitting here with Eric Andre from the Eric Andre Show. Hey. Hey. What's up, Bay? What's up, Boo? What's up, Bo Bo? How do you get your own show to be named after yourself? That's probably the easiest part of the show. I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't know if it that is. That wasn't the battle. That wasn't the hurdle getting my stupid show in the air. Yeah, I guess that isn't a very creative name, right? It's just your name. It's name not a creative space. show, and no one should watch it. <laughs> watch Fuller House on Netflix. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm doing. Mm. You're sassy. Yeah, I am. You got a little sass. Check the toot at the door. I'm not going to. You need an AA, not the battery, <laughs> and attitude adjustment. All right, tell me about your show, the one that's named after yourself, that's not very creative. It is like Charlie Rose, Bare Bones. You know, I actually think it's a little nails. more like Meet the Press, honestly. It's like Meet the Press, Charlie Rose, yeah. To Catch a Predator, Cops. So how do you choose the guests that you have? We try to pick the person that we would think knows the least information about the show. And then what happens when they realize that they're basically getting punked? It's case by case. It depends on the guest. T.I., for example, yeah. was really happy. I mean, he wasn't thrilled. High five. Hey, I'd be damned. He wasn't as bad as Lauren Conrad. <laughs> nope. I'm not out to give anybody a hard time. Except for me. Let's talk about the RNC. So you almost got murdered, right? I wouldn't say I almost got murdered, but I was 
afraid for my safety. I'm trying to get on stage. I'm trying to get on stage. Speaking of the RNC, do you have any advice for Donald Trump? You know those Halloween sound effects CDs that your mom plays while kids are trick-or-treating? Yes. He played that over an entire speech. I think that would really affect the mood. Could you give me an example? <laughs> if you could give Hillary Clinton a campaign theme song other than the one that she has right now, which is Rachel Platten. She should play like a Jello Biafra spoken word CD about how there's anti-ballistic missiles in outer space. I think I need an example for that. Talk has the about... interview started yet? No. Let me know when you're ready. No, interview hasn't started yet. We're on in five, four, three, two. Well guys, that was Eric Andre for you. Check out Eric Andre's show on YouTube or MySpace, whatever. Tetris, let's go way back. Back to 2014 again? Even further than that in This Week in History. 15 years ago, back in 2001, InSync's celebrity debuted at the top of the Billboard 200 with first week sales of, get this, 1.88 million copies. Now at the time, it was the second best debut sales week in the Nielsen music era, behind only... InSync, no strings attached. Mm -hmm, yet their previous album, which started with 2.42 million. million copies. I was so excited mm -hmm. to buy that album. Album. Bye bye bye. It's gonna be me. It's gonna be me. Oh, this I promise you. Yes. All the hits. And you know what? Celebrity had his share of hits as well, like Pop, Gone, Girlfriend, and was the third best selling album of 2001 with more than 4 million copies sold. The group did reunite, sort of, last week for JC Chazé's 40th birthday. A clear sign that they'll be dropping a surprise reunion album by the end of the summer. Oh, Come on, Tetris. Tetris, no. Anyway, Justin at least is front and center right now. He's winning the Teen Choice Decade Award and competing for Billboard's Song of the Summer with his number one Hot 100 hit, Can't Stop the Feeling, which is currently at number nine on the Hot 100, where it spent all of its 14 weeks in the top 10. And of course, the last time we saw the guys was at the 2013 MTV Video Music Awards, which was amazing. So good. And somebody else poised for a big night at this year's VMAs is, of Rihanna? course. Yes, Rihanna, and that is who we are talking about in our Artist Spotlight, presented by StubHub. StubHub, your ticket. It out. This could be an understatement, but as the kids would say, hashtag Rihanna's killing it party. Her latest album, Anti, which sits at number nine on the Billboard 200 this week, has spent 28 weeks in the top 10. We're talking almost seven months, people. She's been all over the Hot 100 this year. Work became her 14th number one on the Hot 100 and spent nine weeks at the top. And of course, she features on Calvin Harris's This Is What You Came For, another major song of the summer contender, which is holding strong at number three this week. And two Rihanna and Drake collabs, Too Good and Work, are at number 17 and 34. Rihanna and Drizzy teamed up to perform both hits at Drake's OVO Fest in and Toronto. And perform, you mean she twerks on them. Oh, yeah, totally. That was in Toronto on July 30th, and it was actually the live debut of Too Good. The duo has also shared the stage on several days during Rihanna's anti-world tour, which doesn't wrap up until November in Abu Dhabi. But Riri isn't just in demand for live shows. She's been cast in the all-female Ocean's Eleven spinoff, this time called Ocean's Ocho. She joins Sandra Bullock, Kate Blanchett, Anne Hathaway, Helena Bonham Carter, Mindy Kaling, and Aquafina. Of course, that's Siete, not Ocho. I'm waiting for the call. This town, your luck can change just that quickly. Not content to just rule music and movies, Rihanna's also making a TV splash in the final season of Bates Motel, where she's been cast as Marion Crane. <laughs> That's right, the Janet Lee role from Psycho. Taking chances has also led her to the Michael Jackson Video Vanguard Award, which she'll receive at the MTV VMAs on August 28th. Rihanna is known for her shocking visuals, including the crime drama in her 2015 short film for Bitch Better Have My Money and the bad romance in 2011's Calvin Harris collaboration, We Found Love. Tetris, quick, what's your favorite Rihanna music video? Only Girl in the World. What about you? Bitch, better have my money. I already paid you back for lunch. All right, let us know your favorite Rihanna music video in the comments or tweet us using the hashtag ChartCenter. It's time for Next Week Now. How do you top Eric Andre? Will you do your entire show from Jones Beach at the Hot 100 Festival next week? That's right, we can't <laughs> wait. We're gonna be taking you backstage with the stars, hanging out with the fans, and giving you a sneak peek at the onstage action. Plus, we'll be working on our tans, obviously. But for now, we'll leave you with a throwback to last year's festival, starring last year's headliner, Justin Bieber. I'm Tetris. I'm Christina, and we'll see you next week on the beach. Yeah, clap your hands.